All right, guys. So welcome back to another test prep type of SAT thing, right? And right now we're going to be doing test number nine, section number three, no calculator. So let's just hop into the questions because you guys know uh, the link to the bio of this link to this test is in the description below. If you guys have any questions, write in the comments. And let's begin. So question one. For the system of the equation above, what is the value of x plus y? So let's see what we're going to do. Um, what am I going to do? I'm going to multiply the bottom equation. Actually, can I do anything? Yeah, I can't do anything. So I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by 2. Right? If I multiply this by 2, so we have 2x minus y is equal to 8. And now we have 2x plus 4y is equal to 8. And now I'm going to subtract these two equations. That will give me... 3y, if I subtract 2x and 2x, that'll give me 0, right? Uh, you don't have to write 0, but negative y minus negative 5. Neg negative y minus 4y is negative 5y is equal to 8 minus 8, which is 0. Therefore, y is equal to 0. And if y is equal to 0, what is x? x is equal to 2x is equal to 8. Therefore, x is equal to 4. 0 plus 4 is b, 4. All right, that took longer than I expected, but next question which of the following is equivalent to this value right here? So let's just let's just distribute. If we distribute this, this will give us 2x squared minus 2x plus, this is 3x squared minus 3x. Now let's combine like terms. 2x squared plus 3x squared is 5x squared. Negative 2x minus 3x is negative 5x. Hence giving us the answer A. All right, next question. Question three, which of the following statements is true about the graph of the equation 2y minus 3x is equal to negative 4 in the xy plane? So 2y is equal to negative, uh, 2y minus 3x is equal to negative 4. If we add 3x on both sides, that will give us 2x is equal to 3x minus 4, right? We added 3x on both sides. We divide both sides by 2. y is equal to 3 over 2x minus 2. And why did I do this? It's because I wanted to put it into slope intercept form because the question is asking us about the slope and the y intercept. And this right here, y is equal to mx plus b, is slope intercept form. So in this case, our slope is going to be positive because 3 half is positive. So that cancels out a and b. And our, our y intercept is going to be negative 2. So it's going to be negative. Therefore, our answer is going to be d positive slope and negative y intercept. All right, next question. Question four. The front of a roller coaster car is at the bottom of a hill and is 15 feet above the ground. And the front of the roller coaster rises at a constant rate of 8 feet per second. Which of the following equations given gives the height h in feet of the, of the front of this roller coaster s seconds after it starts up the hill? Wow, that took a long, to read, long time to read. But so it starts from 15 feet above the ground. So h is equal to 15 plus... And then how many feet does it rise per second? 8. So 8s. 8s. Therefore, our answer is going to be A. H is equal to 8 seconds, I mean 8 meters, yeah, 8 feet per second. And it has an initial altitude of 15. So that's how we got A. Moving on. All right, question 5. The equation above gives the amount C in dollars and electrician charges for a job that takes 8 hours. Mr. Sanchez and Mr. Roland each hired this electrician the electrician worked two hours longer on mrs sanchez's job than on mr roland's job how many more did how much more did the electrician electrician charge mr San, mrs San, uh, sanchez than mr roland okay so basically if you look at this question if the electrician charges two hours longer so that's 75 times two which is 150 dollars more because the constant stays the same right 125 doesn't change but if you pay if you hire him for two more hours that's going to be two additional hours to 75 which means Mr. Roland, I mean, Mrs. Sanchez play, paid $150 more. C. All right, moving on. Question six. The circle above as center O has length of arc ADC. ADC is 5 pi, right? 5 pi. If X is equal to 100, what is the length of arc ABC? ABC. So if, basically, if the length, if the arc length is 5 pi, right? So... If this is 100, x is 100. So how, what is the degree measure of this angle right here? The degree measure of this angle right here is going to be 360 minus 100, right? Which is 260. So therefore, 
and this arc right here is going to be 2.6 times longer because uh, 100 times 2.6 is 260. So 2.6 times 5 pi gives us 13 pi, right? Because this right here is going to be 2.6 times larger than this right here because this angle right here is 2.6 larger than this angle right here, giving us 13 pi b. All right. Question seven, if eight over x is equal to 160, what is the value of x? So eight over x is equal to 160. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by x. Multiply both sides by x, giving me eight is equal to 160x. Now I'm gonna divide both sides by 160. So x is equal to eight over 160, or it can be rewritten as 0 0.05. Meaning our answer is going to be d. All right, question eight. In the, if the, in the equation above, a is a constant. If no value of x satisfies the equation, what is the value of a? Of a? So right here. So let me simplify this equation right here. So if we distribute this, 2ax minus 15 is equal to 3x plus 15 plus 5x minus 5, right? Therefore, 2ax minus 15 is equal to, we combine like terms, 8x plus 10. And now... If this equation has no x, va x values that satisfy the equation, that means that this value right here has to equal this value. Because if these two equal, right, they cancel out, that gives us negative 15 is equal to 10, which is obviously not true. So it means there are going to be no values of x. So therefore, 2ax has to equal to 8x. Cancel out the x's, right? 2a is equal to 8, divide both sides by 2. a is equal to 4, meaning your answer is going to be c. All right, question 9. And if a system of three equations is graphed in the xy plane above, how many solutions does the system have? So in order to figure out how many solutions a system of equation has, you look at where they intercept. So if you look at all these graphs, the parabola, the two straight lines, they all intercept right here as well as, yeah, they only intercept at this point right here. So it means they only have one point of interception, meaning there's only one solution to this, these three equations. All right, question 10. The equation above is true for all values of x, where a, b are constant. What are the value of a times b? So if these two are the same, right? So now 5 times what is equal to 20? So that means a times is 4, right? Because if you look at the first values, that's going to equal to 20. 5 times 4 is 20. And now let's look at the second value. We have to find b. So what is b equal to? So b is equal to, we just look at x squared. So 3 times 5x squared is already 15x squared. So 15x squared times, I mean, 15x squared plus negative plus negative b x, negative 4b x squared is equal to what? Negative 9x squared, right? We just cancel out the x squareds. We can simplify this easier. 15 minus 4b is equal to negative 9. Right? That's how we find b. Because, as you guys can see here, bx times ax is equal to uh, plus 3 times 5x squared is equal to negative 9x squared. Hence, this equation that we initially got. So, now we just solve minus 15 on both sides. Negative 4b is equal to negative 24. Divide both sides by negative 4. b is equal to 6. And they're asking for the value of a times b. So, what's 6 times 4? 24. c. All right, next question, question 11. Which of the following represents all possible values of x that will satisfy the equation above? All right, let's just cross multiply. So if we cross multiply, right, cross multiply. So that'll give us 2x is equal to 2x times x minus 3. We distribute 2x is equal to 2x is equal to 2x squared minus 6x. Now I'm gonna subtract 2x on both sides. That'll give me zero is equal to 2x squared minus 8x. Now I'm going to distribute 2x on both sides. So that will give me 2x times x minus 4 is equal to 0. Therefore, x has to equal to 0 and 4. Right? So boom. That's going to be answer. 0 and 4. Alright, question 12. Which of the following is equivalent to the expression for above for x is greater than 0? So, 5. What is 5 equal to? 5 is equal to 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1. Right? 
because five times one, because two x plus one over two x plus one is essentially one, right? And five times one is equal to five, right? That's correct. So what's this equal to? This is equal to 10x plus one over two x plus one. No, 10x plus, wait, what? Wrote that wrong, 10x plus five over two x plus one. So we just add these two equations, right? And that'll give us 10x plus six over two x plus one. Therefore, our answer is going to be D because 10x plus five plus one was 10x plus six over the denominator, which stays the same, two x plus one. If you guys know how to add fractions, you guys will get this easily. Now, move on out. Question 13. The graph of the function f in the xy plane above is a parabola. Which of the following defines f? So what's the vertex going to be? It's going to be 3, 1. So most of these equations are written in vertex form, which is y is equal to, to um, a over x minus h squared plus k, where hk is going to be your center, right? I made many videos on this, so if you guys are watching this, you guys should know this already. Therefore, our center is going to be 3 and 1. So x minus 3. It's going to be x minus 3 squared plus 1. And then there's going to be some number in front of it, a. Therefore, our equation is going not to be this because this is plus, not minus. This is minus 3 plus 1, so this is good. And this is, my, this is also plus, so b and d are wrong. And next we have a and c. So we could just use the value of 2, 5 and plug it into this, in this equation. So 4 times 2 minus 3 is 1. 1 squared is 1 plus 1, let's get the 5, so that's good, plug it right here, x minus 3, x minus 3 is 2, I mean x minus 2 minus 3 is negative 1, 1 squared is 1, 1 plus 1 is equal to 2, which is not equal to 5, so this is wrong, meaning your answer is going to be A. So you just plug in the values and you'll get your answer right there. Alright, second to last multiple choice question, question 14. In, this, in, which in, in which of the following does the shaded region represent the solution set in the xy plane to the systems of inequalities above? So x is greater than x plus 2. So which one of the following represents x plus 2? It's probably going to be this line right here, right? These line, this line right here. So if x is y is greater than x plus 2, that means it's going to be the top region, like right here. It's going to shade right here, right? It's going to shade somewhere. So let me just draw this for you. So xy plane, we have... Uh, y is greater than x plus 2, so it's going to be shading this region right here. And now we have this other equation, 2x plus 3y is less than 6, less than or equal to 6. So I'm going to subtract 2x on both sides, 3y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 6, divided both sides by 3y is less than or equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 2, which is represented by this line right here, right? And if this is true, then it shades all of this region right here. So therefore, the equation of this line is going to be B because it's above this region, but it's lower than this region, right? So boom, your answer is going to be B for the answer of this, these two inequalities. All right, moving on. Question 15. What is the set of all solutions to the equation square root of x plus 2 is equal to negative x? So what we can do is we could square both sides, right? If we square both sides, x plus 2 is equal to negative x squared, which is equal to x squared. Now we can subtract x minus 2 on both sides. Uh, that will give us 0 is equal to x squared minus x minus 2. And this can be factored out into x minus 2 times x plus 1, right? Therefore, x is equal to 2 and negative 1. Now we just plug it back in. So that means square root of... Uh, 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 is equal to negative 2. And this is not true, so it means these two solution choices are wrong. And let's try negative 1. So negative 1 minus, negative 1 plus 2 is 1, is equal to square, negative negative 1, which is 1. Square root of 1 is equal to 1. Therefore, our answer is going to be B. Right, just plug it back in, and you guys will have the answer. I'm speaking kind of quickly because I'm trying to get this video over with, so I can explain it, how, like, I can show you how fast you guys can do this question. Because you should easily be able to do this within a few minutes. Like, each question is one minute, and I'll show you how to do it. Right, question 16. What is the volume in cubic centimeters of a right rectangular prism that has a length of 4 centimeters, a width of 9 centimeters, and a height of 10 centimeters? So what is the volume of um, a rectangular prism equal to? A rectangular prism is equal to uh, length times width times height, right? Therefore, we have the length, the width, and the height 
which is 4 times 9 times 10. What's 4 times 9 times 10? That's equal to 360. And that's going to be your answer. All right, moving on. Question 17. If, let's, if x satisfies the equation above, what is the value of 2x plus 1? So we have 4x plus 2 is equal to 4. If we divide both sides by 2, 4x divided by 2 is 2x. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 2x plus 1. That's equal to 2. 2x plus 1. 2x plus 1. 2. Answer is 2. Moving on. Question 18. The figure above shows the complete graph of the function f in the xy plane. The function g not shown is defined by g of x is equal to f of x plus 6. What is the maximum value of the function g? So f of x is shown right here, right? So they're saying f of x plus 6. So it means the greatest value of f of x, f of x plus 6 is going to be the maximum of the function g. So what is the maximum of f of x? So the highest value in f of x is 2. Right, so the maximum of f of x is going to be 2. But the maximum of g of x is going to be 2 plus 6. So the maximum of function g is going to be 8. All right, moving on to the next question. All right, we have this question right here. Question 19. Triangle PQR it has a right angle. Angle Q. If sine of r is equal to 4 over 5, what is the value of tan of p? So let's just draw this right triangle. Right angle Q, right angle Q. So Q is a right angle and PR, PQR, right? If sine of R is equal to 4 fifths, so we have Soka Toa. Sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So R right here, right? Opposite, which is 4, over hypotenuse, which is 5. And this is a classic 3, 4, 5 triangles, if you guys can recognize. So they're asking for what is tan of P. This is P right here. So tan is equal to opposite over adjacent, which is 3 over 4. Opposite over adjacent. 3 over 4. So let's continue on. All right, question 20. The graph of the linear function f is shown in the xy plane above. The graph of the linear function and g not shown is perpendicular to the graph of f and passes through the points 1, 3. What is the value of g of 0? So we're, we're given this graph right here. And we're given a graph that is perpendicular to this graph. So this graph right here, f y is equal to f of x, has the points 0, 3, as well as, what point is this? This is 1, 1. So let's find the slope of this. What is slope? Delta y over delta x, change of y over change of x. 3 minus 1. What is that equal to? 2. 0 minus 1, negative 1. Therefore, this graph has a slope of negative 2 over 1. And if some graph is perpendicular, that's the negative reciprocal of this right here. So what's the negative reciprocal of this? That's equal to 1 over half. Change this, negative change to positive, 1 over one over 2. Flip it, 1 over 2. 2 over 1, flip that, 1 over 2. So the slope of the, the new line is going to be 1 over 2. I mean, the slope of g. So g of 0, I mean, g of x is equal to 1 half x plus, um, let's see. So it passes through the point 1, 3. So if it passes through the point 1, that's going to be plus 5 over 2. Because if you plug in 1 in this situation, it's going to be 1 half plus x is going to be 3. Subtract 1 half on both sides. x is equal to 5 over 2. So that's how I got this. And if you plug in 0 in this case, because they're asking for g of 0, right? They're asking for g of 0. If you plug in 0, then it gives you g of 0 is equal to 5 over 2. And boom, you're done with this test in a matter of 18 minutes and 43 seconds. All right, so it's that easy. You have 25 minutes for this section, and you guys can do this test in 25 minutes. I mean, in less than 20 minutes, as I just shown. And I was talking and trying to explain, but if you guys can do this in your head, that'll take around less than 15 minutes. So boom, that's 10 minutes of checking your work, and you're going to be guaranteed to get every single question on the math section right. So if you guys study this, boom, this is going to be how you guys are going to do it. Peace out.